We often tend to see conflicts as two-sided, left versus right, labor versus management, one country versus another. But what we often fail to see is a third side, not party to the conflict, but under pressure to pick favorites. Take the Russia-Ukraine conflict, for instance. It has divided much of Europe and the world. On one side, we have Russia and its allies like Belarus. On the other side, we have America and NATO member nations, apparently supporting Ukraine. They are locked in a conflict that can escalate into war. And they expect the rest of the world to take sides instead of helping settle the differences. India found itself in such a situation at the United Nations Security Council. Russia and America had a bitter dispute at the UNSC. It was followed by a vote. India abstained. Was it the right move? Should India have taken a stand for Ukraine, if not for the others? Is abstention also taking a stand? That's what we'll discuss tonight. On Monday, the UNSC met to discuss the Ukraine conflict. The meeting was requested by the US last week. It had all the theatrics of the Cold War. Russia painted the Americans as the aggressors. America accused the Russians of violating the UN Charter. There were angry debates, intense face-offs, even some walkouts. India steered clear of it. It abstained from a procedural vote, a vote on whether discussions were required over the threat of a Russian invasion into Ukraine. The UNSC has 15 member states. Ten countries voted in favor of the agenda, meaning they wanted a discussion on a possible Russian invasion. These countries included the U.S. and its allies. Two countries voted against a discussion. That's Russia and China. And three countries abstained. Kenya, Gabon, and India. Nine votes were needed for this discussion to take place. Nine yeses. They had ten. So the discussions went ahead. India did not side with either bloc. India's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy, stressed on the need for dialogue. The statement called for an immediate de-escalation of tensions and reiterated support for a peaceful resolution of conflict. The ambassador said 20,000 Indian students and nationals live in Ukraine. Their safety is the top priority for India. His statement was by far New Delhi's most detailed position on the matter. India's interest is in finding a solution that can provide for immediate de-escalation of tensions taking into account the legitimate security interests of all countries and aimed towards securing long-term peace and stability in the region and beyond. Quiet and constructive diplomacy is the need of the hour. Any steps that increase tension may best be avoided by all sides in the larger interest of securing international peace and security. More than 20,000 Indian students and nationals live and study in different parts of Ukraine, including in its border areas. The well-being of Indian national is a priority to us. Not my circus, not my monkeys. This may just be the most apt description of India's UNSC stance, a position which took into account India's national interest and commitment to a multipolar world. But critics say India's statement tilted towards the Russian position because an abstention is essentially not a yes, so it is seen as a negative vote. New Delhi statement talked about the quote-unquote legitimate security interests of all countries. Now, this statement is being seen as a recognition of Russia's concerns over the presence of NATO in its neighborhood. And I'm not the one saying this, the Russians are. They welcomed India's position. Let me show you a tweet from a Russian diplomat called Dmitry Polyansky. He has thanked New Delhi for not supporting what he calls American hand-twisting. It's another matter that he put India in the same bracket as China. Now, this was never going to be easy for New Delhi. It was always going to be tricky. If you don't take sides, if you don't weigh in on an international conflict, how do you aspire to be a global power? If you do take sides, which one do you pick? You have strategic partners on both sides of the divide. But then again, it's wise to pick your battles. You don't have to fight each one of them. New Delhi decided it did not want to pick this one. And India is not the only one that is trying to strike a balance and diffuse tensions. France is doing it too. President Emmanuel Macron held another phone call with Russian President Vladimir Putin. They discussed de-escalation and the need to keep diplomatic lines open at any cost. Britain is doing the exact opposite. Its Prime Minister Boris Johnson has decided to travel to Ukraine and hold talks with President Zelensky. Now, this is being seen as the UK's clear demonstration of support to Ukraine. Reports also say that this visit was announced immediately after Putin snubbed Johnson's phone call request. 
So there's a lot at play here. Countries safeguarding strategic interests, countries pushing their agenda and hoping others will support them, countries trying to defuse tensions, a leader hoping to escape to Ukraine from a political conflict at home. This Ukraine story is going down to the wire. We'll be tracking it for you. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.